Now, we attempted to go through and outline every book of the Bible. I have that in briefing the Bible. Now, Ephesians and Revelation were the two easiest books in the Bible to outline. You know why? They're logical. Now, I don't pretend to be able to understand them, but I do want to say this. You can outline them, and Paul is logical in Ephesians, and John is logical in Revelation. The book of Revelation is outlined for us. He was told to write the things you have seen, things are, things that will be. Now, that's a threefold division, and it's arranged according to sevens. You couldn't have it any better than that. Now, the epistle to the Ephesians is logical. And the very interesting thing is you can outline it very easily. And so I'd like to just say a word about the outline of this epistle. And then I want to say a word about Paul and Ephesus because that's important for us to see. Now, there are six chapters here. The first three chapters, you have the heavenly calling of the church. This is the doctrinal side. In the last three chapters, you have the earthly conduct of the church, which is very practical. You see, the church has a head. The head of the church is Christ. He's in heaven. We're identified with him. But you see, the feet of the church are down here on the earth. And Paul won't leave you sitting up there in the heavenly. Because one of the things he's tell you, beginning of chapter 4, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Now, what he's saying is this. He says, Christian, it's nice to sit up there in the heavenlies and boast of your position in Christ. But he says, for goodness sakes, get down out of your high chair and start walking. Because you need to walk. And remember, in that day, they were walking in a pagan society in the Roman world. Then there's something else that I think is quite interesting. He says also, as soldiers, you're to stand. So when you get tired of sitting in the heavenlies, it might be well for you to come down to earth and walk down here on the earth. Now, that makes a nice division, does it not? First three chapters, doctrinal. Last three chapters, practical. And we need both. Don't just live in the first three chapters. Oh, they're wonderful. But get down here where we live today. Right down where the rubber meets the road. Right down here where the nitty-gritty is. Where you live and move and have your being. Now, in chapter 1, it's very logical. The church is a body. Chapter 1. Chapter 2, the church is a temple. And then chapter 3, the church is a mystery. Now, these are the three chapters of doctrine. Now, when you come down to the practical part in chapter 4, the church is a new man. That is, the church is to exhibit something new in the world, walking through the world as a new man. Then you have, in chapter 5, the church will be a bride. Now, don't get the idea that the church is a bride. The church is not a bride today. The church is a church. Paul said to the Corinthians, I have espoused you as a chaste virgin to Christ. I'm just getting you engaged. We're engaged to him today. But the church someday will be a bride. Then the church is a soldier of Jesus Christ. That's chapter 6. And a wag who heard me give this down in Florida He said to me, he says, that's interesting. The church will be a bride, you say, and the church is a soldier. He says, you know, for a lot of marriages down here today, why, they get married first and then the fighting starts. Well, it ought not to be that way because that's not the way Paul gives it to us. Now, these are the practical aspects. The church is a soldier. There's an enemy to be fought today. There's a battle going on. And the bugle is sounded, and we need to stand the day for God in this world. Now you have, in chapter 1, where we're going to begin, the church is a body. And do you know that's interesting? Here again, you can divide it into three parts. And I'll come to this later, but just let me mention it now. 
God the Father planned the church, verses 3 through 6. God the Son paid the price for the church, verses 7 through 12. And then God the Holy Spirit protects the church, verses 13 and 14. And this was so wonderful that Paul concluded chapter 1, prayer for knowledge and power. And we're going to pause for that too when we get there because this is great. This is wonderful. I hope it'll be meaningful to you.